that, which was great. There, okay, so there's um, some, some side effects that are commonly not related to the birth control that you're currently on, such as having um, digestive issues or weakening your gut lining, having thyroid, uh, thyroid hormone imbalances to just general inflammation, blood clots, which I know you mentioned before, seizures, um, general nutrient depletion. So I would love to get into this topic um, when you are ready. Right. Yeah. Um, it is very interesting because often I'll have a patient come into my practice and they'll be dealing with something. And one of the things that sometimes the, I guess it's like almost like the, the elephant in the room is actually it's their birth control that's causing the issue. And um, so, you know, first talking about digestion. So one of the problems with, and again, so some of these things I'm gonna talk about, it doesn't affect all women, but some women that do take birth control. I think that's one of the problems I, I think that's right now is that there's not enough talk about some of the potential side effects of birth control. And again, like I'm hoping also that you know, people watching this, I'm, I'm not tr also trying to, to demonize birth control, everything. I feel all medications at, at some point right. have, um, have their place, but it's also good just, in, again, you know, to have that awareness. Um, so looking at okay. digestion, yeah. The best choice you can make for yourself. Right, exactly. And so why, some of the reasons why there can be some issues with digestion is, well, first, um, if we think about pregnancy. So one of the things that women often complain about during pregnancy is acid reflux. And so it's for two reasons. Obviously, you know, the, the fetus growing inside is, is causing more pressure, but also uh, progesterone uh, naturally relaxes the, um, the lower esophageal sphincter. Well, similarly, the um, progesterone found in some forms of birth control, actually all forms of birth control contain progesterone, but not all forms of birth control contain estrogen. This, this is a, another side. But anyway, so, so basically the, the progesterone is a natural relaxant. So in, for some women on birth control, they might actually experience as a reflux. And this actually did happen with one of my patients. Um, as soon as she started taking the birth control, she was just having reflux. She, um, her, um, her stomach was bothering her and she had to be on birth control for a, a set of time. So we did do some uh, interventions to basically help with her digestion. But naturally, once she went off the medication, uh, off, the, off the birth control, her reflux went away. Uh, on the other side, um, I think probably, hopefully some of your viewers are familiar with the, the term microbiome. Uh, basically all the, when we think if about they the- know Right, so basically the, the bacteria. We have, well, we have bacteria all over our bodies. Um, but let's, often when we think about microbiome, we, we're talking about specifically the, um, the gut flora, but also even like in this case, because since we're talking about uh, birth control, because birth control also affects this flora, but we also have vaginal flora. So we have all this flora. And um, specifically, actually, the, um, the synthetic estrogens in uh, birth control really impact this flora and actually make it more possible for um, two specific naturally occurring flora, but that we want to make sure that are in balance, uh, E. coli and candida actually to increase while actually decreasing some of our more beneficial uh, lactobacillus uh, species. So that's one interesting thing about when we're thinking about um, GI health. Uh, but the last part is, um, and this is mostly with women uh, with different forms of inflammatory bowel disease. So. Uh, Crohn's ulcerative colitis, but actually certain, um, but a lot of the um, synthetic hormones found in birth control actually can make uh, inflammatory bowel disease worse. And wow. they haven't actually found uh, a causation um, that it actually causes inflammatory bowel disease, but they've, there's been a lot of studies showing that once these women go off, their symptoms improve dramatically. I mean, they're always going to basically have it. I mean, that's like, that's a whole other topic, but just that alone showing that how much it can increase inflammation and also can even affect um, what we call the tight junctions and, and in a more lay term thinking about um, the term like leaky gut. So actually increasing right. leaky gut. Right, which can lead to a whole other source of issues like 
Hashimoto's thyroiditis and other autoimmune conditions exactly. as well, yes. which is a topic yes. which we will cover. Yes, yes, yes. Coming months. Yes. Um, but that's really interesting. Is it common for women on birth control to experience um, vaginal yeast infections then if candida in- oh, increases? Oh, definitely. Oh, it can definitely increase. I want, well, it depends. Like, if, like, if you're, you know, eating um, a, a healthy diet, but, um, and that's also probably another topic on, like, what's a good diet for, um, for candida, um, but also thinking mm-hmm. about um, probiotics. So definitely, um, if you are on birth control, there's some really great probiotics I would definitely recommend. One is by um, Jaro, which you can easily, it's called Fendophilus, and basically because there's two specific strains um, that are very effective for one, preventing yeast infections and also preventing UTIs, which is Lactobacillus uh, rhamnosus, and the other is Rotari, which is found in that product. And then there's another one that I usually prescribe in my practice, which um, is a professional line by Claire Labs and their women's formula. Both of those are really good. Uh, so if you are on birth control, I definitely would recommend being on that. And kind of back, oh, you were talking before about um, nutrient deficiencies in birth control. And so the big one to watch out for is folate. So if you are on birth control pills, you definitely want to make sure that you are taking folate. And why folate is important, and it's not just important when we're, I think the big thing most women think about is uh, pregnancy. And yes, it's very, very important for uh, getting pregnant and maintaining pregnancy. Obviously, when you're on birth control, you're not really thinking about that. But another big thing, which I, I see often in my practice, is cervical dysplasia and HPV. And so women who are more deficient in folate are more likely to, if they do get infected with HPV, TV are more likely to develop cervical dysplasia. So that's another big factor that you want to make sure that you're taking at least 400 to 800 milligrams of 